We have a massive opportunity this year to capitalize on what is one of the biggest bull runs in crypto history, but also be aware that time is running out to capitalize. And if you don't have a solid plan in place for post halving, because we just saw the Bitcoin halving, then I believe this video will be of immense benefit to you as I'm going to break down where we currently sit in the crypto cycle, what comes next according to historical data, as well as my own analysis, and then of course, at the end of the video, I'm gonna get into my exact plan when it comes to accumulating crypto altcoins is now the time to be buying. How aggressively should you be buying? What altcoins should you be looking at? What are the strongest performing sectors and much more? We'll touch on that at the end after we go over the current crypto cycle update. By the way, I'm back doing daily uploads again on the channel. I'll be uploading every single day at 6 p.m. GST, so Dubai time or 10 a.m. EST, which is of course New York time. I was at Token 2049 all week at conferences, events. It was so amazing to be able to meet people in real life from the crypto industry that I've never met before, go to some amazing events, speak to projects, learn more about the industry, but of course, now I'm back in my element. This is what I enjoy doing most, making content every day, grinding, researching every day, building, focusing on the market, trading. I pretty much just going to sit at my desk for like the next three months straight, 12, 14, 15 hours a day. This is what I love doing. And I'm so happy to be back grinding. So in light of that, the daily uploads are coming back to the channel at 6 p.m. GST. Let's go, everyone. Let's go. Hopefully I can help you make some money in, in the market this year and also help guide you in, you know, what could be a really crazy year. I mean, it's already been a crazy year, but I think things are, go are going to get pretty exciting at some point. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button down below for daily crypto alpha. Also hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Of course, those that have had the bell turned on in recent times have been blessed with some pretty timely warnings in the market. I told you over a week ago that it was probably wise to de-risk. Then we saw the major drop actually down to 59,500. I warned you when Bitcoin was 66K. So sometimes it's super time sensitive, these videos, and it's important to have that notification bell on. Let's look at currently where Bitcoin sits overall. So from a weekly perspective, of course, Bitcoin is looking strong, currently holding above the major support level at the $59,000 region. One very important thing to note about the recent market correction is the strength of the 60K zone. It held up really well. There was a lot of defense in this area. Although we did see a liquidation wick take us down to the 59,500 zone, Bitcoin responded super strongly and subsequent dips were eaten up. There was a significant buy wall around that $60,000 level. 60,000 now is kind of reminding me of what $20,000 was for Bitcoin back in January and February of 2023, obviously acting as that major pivot point for the subsequent rally. And then of course, a major support level again, when we did have that week in March, and then it's pretty much been up only since then. I would love to see this 60K zone be that pivot point again for the next leg to the upside. That's what it looks like so far. And I'm just drawing the similarities in terms of price action here, having that super strong break, then a couple of retests, and then of course that thrust to the upside. This is actually quite nice price action, um, although it <laughs> did look pretty terrible a few days ago and the market was very scary. Seeing the response here, seeing this weekly wick really get eaten up and a lack of a close below this level was quite positive. Remember, in that original video I, a week ago, I said, look, look for the weekly close. Keep your eye on it. If we start closing weekly below the 60K level, it's, it's a bad sign. And we're probably going down to low to mid 50s. That didn't happen. We responded nicely. So of course, we're all in the clear from a weekly perspective on Bitcoin. And then on the lower time frames, I love this chart from Follos, obviously showing the response around 60. And then how Bitcoin has been making a series of higher lows on the lower time frames for that next push up to 66 to 67K. At the end of the video, I'm going to tell you what I think is going to come next for Bitcoin. We'll start more macro. And then at the end, I'll, I'll tell you in the shorter term what I'm expecting, because obviously that will dictate how we position ourselves in terms of the altcoin market. And look, the extreme red day that we did get last week was a massive buying opportunity. I always preach this on the shows that major forced liquidations, major forced sell-offs, which are times of extreme fear and panic in the market are oftentimes the best accumulation opportunities in the market, of course, anyone that did manage to scoop up those major dips and had limit order set, like I've been preaching for months and months, you guys would have gotten some nice entries into a bunch of old coins that I talked about, like with 
like Ondo, like Ton, even Phantom, Injective, Celestia, etc. that have all bounced super strongly. Um, at the end, I'll talk about some ults I'm currently watching, but that was super encouraging. What ended up happening during that liquidation cascade was the OI weighted funding actually turned negative for the first time since October 2023. As you can see here, see how it just started to turn negative. So this is the open interest, meaning it's starting to weight towards the short side versus the long side. It got aggressively long a few weeks ago in the meme coin mania. So if this did not spell opportunity at that time, I really don't know what does because these dips often do mark local bottoms for Bitcoin or at least mark periods of extreme fear that we often see strong price response out of when Bitcoin subsequently, when Bitcoin does start to recover. So always keep your eye on this chart. If you ever see it going significantly red, that is probably an indication that there's fear and it's probably an indication that you should buy. Obviously with the market bouncing now, you'd be wondering, well, is now too late to buy? You might be feeling FOMO, like you've missed the recent bounce. Well, let's start to get into it now. But instead of going into the short-term stuff, let's first look at where we are in terms of a cycle. Let's give some context as to where we currently sit. Are we still on track for a major altcoin rally? Is Bitcoin still on track to hit 100, 120, 140K? Haven't done an update like this in a while, so I'm looking forward to digging into things right now. The Bitcoin halving was just completed. We know that we typically get these pre-halving shakeouts. As we've discussed, that's exactly what we got. Now the Bitcoin halving is done. It's completed. The new issuance of Bitcoin is now halved. That does mean there's less supply of Bitcoin going onto the market. Typically, that has been a positive catalyst for Bitcoin. But what can we expect in the near future? Well, in the super near future, a couple of things I've got my eye on from a macro point of view are the Bitcoin ETF flows. On Friday, we did see positive flows, but I'm interested to see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what we end up getting in the realm of flows. Of course, this has been one of the major price drivers behind the market. Typically, Bitcoin has moved on the days where we have seen a successive streak of positive flows into the ETFs. And conversely, during periods of red where Bitcoin is flowing out of these funds, that's when we have seen these Bitcoin corrections. So Friday ticked in the green, or in this case, in the black, in traditional finance speak. This week, let's see how that goes. Another thing to take note of is this week is some of the major macro data that we are getting. We have the home sales data. We have the Q1 GDP data, which is a major date. PC inflation data. I know inflation was a little bit hot, so that is definitely something to watch. We also have a lot of the S&P 500 companies reporting. A lot of tech stocks, AI stocks are now starting to cool off, starting to look a little bit more bearish. They've definitely cooled down. So th there's going to be a major spotlight on earnings. Bitcoin, because it's so correlated to the macro environment, I know we like to think that it isn't, but it is. It's very responsive to global liquidity. It's very responsive to the stock market. Stock market has been rallying. Bitcoin's also been rallying. It'll be interested to see what ends up coming from some of these reports. It could really go either way. And that's why I'm telling you, just keep your eye on some of these dates this week. That's in the slightly shorter term. In the longer term, from a macro lens, let's take a look at where we sit, given the fact that the Bitcoin halving has just taken place. So now we're officially in a post halving period. So we've talked a lot about the lead up to the halving, how we get shakeouts in the lead up to the halving. What actually tends to happen post halving? Well, post halving, in the weeks succeeding a halving, typically we do see this choppy sideways price action. We saw it for a couple months in 2020. We saw it again a few years prior. This time, it's also looking pretty similar. You have that major shakeout just pre-halving. You see a major bounce during the halving, then a decline. Then it kind of looks like we want to chop sideways here. Now, keep in mind that the range currently is 60K to 70K. So I mentioned before how strong that floor is at 60. That is the current floor of the range. And if you want to go into a slightly lower time frame, like the four hourly, we can plot this out pretty simply as the major levels to watch. You have your highs here, at the 72K zone. 70K is more of a psychological level. Then of course you have this level in the 60K region. This is the current zone that we're in for Bitcoin. Expecting some chop sideways, altcoins are going to move on an extended risk beta to Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin pumps, alts are going to pump harder. If Bitcoin chops back down to the bottom of the range, alts are going to bleed a little bit more. But until there is a structural change either direction, traders are just going to have to be a little bit patient. So if you are a day trader, that's what I'll be watching on the four hour, on the one day, even the hourly. Watch these major levels. That will kind of dictate the momentum of the market. In the shorter term, 60K, in my opinion, is an amazing accumulation zone because you have clear invalidation. A lot of other alts like Phantom, Injective, Whiff, etc. 
retrace back down to that high time frame level that if Bitcoin does go back down to 60, that is, in my opinion, a good accumulation zone because you have invalidation. That's the beauty of working off the extremities of ranges. You have pretty clear invalidation both to the long side and the short side. Generally, I don't short this market, at least not during a bull market and a bear market. You can swing short and you can do, you know, short pair trading, etc. But right now, I'm way more interested in looking for longs because of what comes next. Because typically after this choppy sideways period, we have seen expansions out of the top of the range. So in this case, it would look like an expansion above the 70 to 72K zone, which the next leg up can take us to 80, 90K. And of course, that's when you are going to see fireworks with altcoins. Obviously, the market will be really hyped. Retail will start getting excited. Even when Bitcoin made its all-time high a couple of weeks ago, it was back in the media again. There was lots of excitement around it. It drove prices up. It drove meme coins up. It's very positive for the market. Crypto is reflexive, right? The higher prices go, the more the media covers it. The more the media covers it, the higher prices go. It's like a flywheel that goes round and round and round until something breaks. It can really, really, really propel higher and higher. And that's what pushed prices of not just Bitcoin, but altcoins, NFTs, etc. super high last cycle. Now, if you take a look, this expansionary phase is quite aggressive and we haven't seen it yet this cycle. We've seen that pre-halving ladder climbing up pulling back, climbing up, pulling back, climbing up, pulling back. We see this pretty much in every cycle. It's cropped out here, but that's exactly what happened in 2020. I will actually zoom out onto the weekly to show you on my chart itself. So pre-halving, you have this period where it chops up, pulls back, chops up, pulls back, eventually has that major breakout. We've exhibited that price action again, but we haven't had that next expansionary push to the upside that we typically see post-halving. So that is something that I'm on the lookout for. When that happens, look, when you only have a data set of three, which is the current data set of the Bitcoin halvings, you can't draw conclusions solely from it and, you know, work out exact time frames. But what I'm prepping for as a general rule is a greater rally at some point towards the end of the year. I think Q3, Q4, it could push into Q1, but I think some of the fireworks will start at least start to crack uh, around the Q3 region. So Q2 does become an accumulation phase. As I said, the market is chopping. On those major dips, those tops give you the leeway and the ability to funnel some capital into some of you know the strong coins that you want to position. And I'll speak about a few in just a second here. And you can see on the wrecked capital chart here, he also shows the major levels, the one that I highlighted before around the 70k zone as the next breakout level to watch. So you don't really need to be too preemptive here. You can literally just sit on the four hour daily and just monitor these levels, draw it in on your own chart and make sure you're monitoring it at all times. That's what I am currently watching. Very interested to see how Bitcoin reacts in the 67 region because this is mid-range. So how ranges typically work, um, and I've gotten more into charting recently, not an expert, but I have you know a basic understanding and have obviously talked and worked with a lot of traders. Typically how ranges work is you have your range low, then you have your range high. These are the major extremities you can play off and these are typically the most resistant levels to change. So the hardest to break through, we've tried multiple times with, you know, rejected and the hardest to break below. We've tried one, two, three, four, five times, six times, seven times, even if you want to count this week here and have bounced off that level of support. So these are the hardest levels to break. And then you have the mid range, which acts as like this intermediary swing support slash resistance. So this is an easier level to swing from, but it does act as a key pivot point for a directional trade when you're in the midst of a range. So these are kind of the three levels I'm looking at right now. 66, which is actually really pivotal. Then of course, you know, range low at 60 and then range high at 71 to 72. So this is kind of how I'm mapping things out right now. You might be like, Mars, why are you trading Bitcoin? I'm only interested in alts. Well, the alts are going to follow Bitcoin. Alts are generally an extension of Bitcoin. So that's something, you know, that we have to look at. But the good news is, I believe we're going significantly higher at some point this year. And as I said, if that's the case, now you want to be taking advantage of you know, any major pullbacks in the market. I mean, just look at what happened last cycle for some of these coins. This just shows you why we haven't seen retail mania yet. I mean, you can even look at all the social data that proves retail isn't here, but all the proof you need is this. Doge went up 10x in a day in January, 2021. Theta went from one bill to 12 bill in three months. Rune went from 200 mil to five bill. Remember, Rune's actually one of the most reflexive tokens in the market. If you're fading Rune in a bull run, I certainly wouldn't be doing that. Let me actually check Rune right now and see what the current price is at. If we click on Rune, we can see it's at $5.84. It's had a major pullback. This is one actually that's on my accumulation list. 
So keep your eye on that. I just remembered I actually have to start stacking a little bit more rune for my portfolio, a bit of alpha for you. Filecoin reached an FDV of 400 billion. This is why FDV is such a meme in the market. A lot of people say, oh, but Slana has an FDV of 100 million and this has an FDV of this and that has an FDV of that. Guys, it's a meme. People have also said to me, you know, Mars Ondo Finance has major unlocks next year. Yes, yes, but that's next year. You'd be very surprised in the shorter term how irrational the market can be and just the crazy valuations that the market tends to assign to these protocols. It can be pretty crazy. So just keep that in mind in a bull run. Don't get too caught up in FDV. Look at what's circulating. Keep in mind when the unlocks are. Don't be an idiot. But keep in mind that the market is irrational and don't trade fully off FDVs. But these stats in front of you just show we haven't hit the mania phase. We've been in this very PVP environment of rotationary capital and the same players playing against each other, PVPing, narratives hopping every single day, RWA's hot, AI's hot, then meme coins are hot, then this is hot, that's hot, kind of ping ponging around, but we haven't seen any definitive extended trends, probably apart from memes. AI had it and then it has cooled off recently. So that just is one indicator, if you need one, that retail isn't here and probably there's a lot to look forward to in this cycle. Elio Trades exemplifies this point by saying, Feels like one of the most asymmetric moments in crypto right now. We're below the prior all-time high. That is true. ETF mania is now settling. I mean, that's true. We've seen the flow settle and the hype settle for that catalyst. Just after the halving, where we've seen a recent shakeout, he says it's hard not to feel like this is the moment to absolutely stack. So let's answer this question. Is it the moment to absolutely stack? Is now the moment to absolutely stack? If we know the market's going to pump, if we know... Good things are coming. Should you be stacking? Well, the answer is yes on a macro time frame. I believe accumulating is a prudent thing to do. I've been doing it. We've been doing it for months. I've said buy extreme red days. We've been setting our limit orders. We've been accumulating. We've been dollar cost averaging into the strong alts across strong sectors that I talk about here on this channel. However, when Elios is the moment here, I highly doubt he's meaning today, tomorrow, or even this week. A moment in time can really be encapsulated over any time frame. But right now, this post-halving chop period, that moment could be three weeks, it could be a month, it could be two months. And within that two months, you may very well see these chops where Bitcoin might chop to the upper bounds of this range, but then it might come back down and do this and then chop and then break out, right? But the problem is, look at this. When it gets rejected here to the bottom, that's a 14% drawdown. If Bitcoin draws down 14%, what do you think alts are going to go down? 30, 40, 50%, 60% for some of the riskier alts. We saw AI alts, like the super risky ones that I didn't talk about on the channel, drop like 70, 80%. If we do have another shakeout and we wick down something like this, alts could go down 50%, 60%. Look, I'm not trying to be alarmist here. I don't necessarily think that will happen. The reason I'm saying that is because you have to be prepared if you are accumulating today and if you believe this is the moment to stack like Elio says, you have to be prepared for some sort of downside at some point. So if you're buying today, that's fine. I always believe in DCAing, especially if you're buying into quality. But if you're buying today and you're not willing to mentally handle a 30, 40% correction, then maybe you have to readjust your thinking around the market or maybe you should just wait because... If you're not willing to suffer these 20, 30% corrections, you might not be cut out for this market this year because we will get these chops and these are actually the chops to accumulate. So the question of whether you should stack or not is really a personal question. Do you have the conviction in a narrative because you need to build a really strong thesis around a coin to buy in when it goes lower and keep averaging in and catch that falling knife? If you do and you've got the capital to do it, do it. If you don't, if you're a bit lower on capital and you tend to get emotional in the market, Wait for major red days and deploy then. No need to deploy after we've seen a relief bounce. In fact, most of my limit orders that got hit recently, I actually took some profits on and I've actually reaccumulated a lot of stables. I'm much more stable coin heavy now, like maybe 30 to 40%. Why? Because on the next major correction, when we do see a chop, that's when I'm going to accumulate my alts again. Although I have been building through those major corrections. So I've increased my net exposure and then on the bounce, taken some off the table. So I've got, you know, adequate stable coins to buy the dip. And I actually did this tweet a couple days ago. I said, look, for those that missed the dip, it's a good lesson in buying fear, but I don't feel like there's really a need to rush right now. I said, the next few weeks are likely to remain choppy. I just showed you the charts before that kind of evidence that based on, you know, prior halvings. 
the macro situation isn't fully resolved. I mean, there's still geopolitical tensions, but another couple of macro events to look at is, of course, what I mentioned before, the earnings that we're getting, some of the inflation data, that we're getting the ETF flow data that we're getting. It's not a fully stable macro environment. Stocks are going to go a long way here to dictating how risk on crypto goes. And I also said it might take a moment to regain retail's trust after another brutal shakeout. You got to remember, a lot of retail got absolutely wrecked on meme coins. They were over leveraged. They got absolutely rinsed and they don't feel that comfortable buying back in right now. Now, of course, the bounce has filled some confidence. It's definitely increased sentiment. It's increased even my sentiment. However, I don't feel like they're fully in that risk on mode that they were a few weeks ago because they might feel a little bit burnt. And that usually is fixed with time, but it can take a few weeks, a few months. And for that reason, I don't think there's a rush to buy. Should you buy? As I said, it's dependent on you, but I don't think there's a rush. There's no like need right now to like ape everything. I'm going to miss out. No, these moves happen slow. We get these shakeouts, but generally my thesis is we go higher. So what are some of the alts that I am looking for in this case on major shakeouts? Let's just go through some interesting setups, some which are actionable now-ish, some that I'm just watching. Ton is one. Ton's a coin and an ecosystem that I've been extremely bullish on. I mentioned this in this video over a month ago on March 12th, where I said Ton's an undervalued altcoin that no one's talking about. A lot of the comments are like, Miles, this is not cheap. This is an 18 billion FDV. Well, we look at it now, close to 40 bill FDV, and it looked like a decent entry, right? Around the $3 region. I think I mentioned in this video that it would be wise to accumulate on dips of ton. It did end up going back down below $3. You had multiple opportunities to accumulate. Interesting from a price action perspective, what's happening now, they had a major announcement pump because there was a lot of conference announcement hype. We've actually seen ton retrace a lot of that move. So from the top to the support level, it's down 22%. We've seen a bounce off the support level that's actually been holding super strong. One, two, three, four, five, six tests of support. This obviously wicked below, but that's mostly leverage, right? On the weekly and daily, we still had closes above, which is a strong sign. So watch Ton in this area. I don't actually think it's a bad accumulation zone. If you miss that initial run to just stack some Ton in case we do get the thrust upwards. I say in case, I think this will go higher and I think it'll be one of the leading layer one networks. It's like an ecosystem, but it uses the Telegram app, 900 million users, it's the main blockchain for withdrawals on that app. And also there's an ecosystem developing around it. And I will share that ecosystem alpha when I dig a bit deeper, like I have been, but I'm just kind of waiting to give you the alpha on some of the ecosystem alts. Another one is Whiff. Whiff's the leader of the meme coins. Ansem here notes that the last time Whiff consolidated in a tight price range for two months and then broke out, it ripped from 30 cents to four Dollars. He's alluding to here the fact that WIF is now consolidating, testing this level, and if we do break out that Q124 highs at 480, then it could make that move to $10. I spoke about in a couple of videos about how WIF could actually challenge Doge this cycle. I still stick to that. Obviously, that would mean a 7, 8x, and that's not factoring in Doge actually scaling if retail comes back. So that's one to watch. Of course, WIF is one that I said is worth looking into. During that major dip, I said with Render were some of the ones I was looking into alongside some other coins as well. This was in the Mars High Club, which is my private community, which by the way, using the link in the description, you can sign up for the waitlist. The waitlist is currently closed. We will be opening the cap soon. So if you want to be first to get access to it, once we do open the cap, you can sign up and then we're going to cap it again. So we're very slowly increasing it. The waitlist is building, but I want to keep that, you know, smaller limited community. Another coin I've been watching very closely, one that I'm investor in and I think has upside is Foxy. If you do look at the Foxy chart, it's actually establishing some pretty nice price action. And this is very common for newer meme coins, typically that get centralized exchange listings early on, like Foxy did, launching on OKX, Bybit. They actually respond to TA uh, quite well into, from a structural perspective. These newer coins, they tend to obey these levels. And I made this observation quite early when Foxy was bouncing off this 10 to 12 level super strongly that look, it's starting to form a little bit of a range here. And that's exactly how Foxy's currently playing. We had the fake out above and then deviation back down below. It's now starting to close here, consolidating around the 15 to 16 level. This is a level where I could see it bouncing, but from a short term perspective, not so interested. This is more of a longer term play for me three to six to 12 months, however long you think this bull run is going to be. I think it could be a good player if we see that linear airdrop uh, ecosystem hype like we saw with Arbitrum in the lead up to their airdrop. I don't think we've had a linear season. When we get it, 
Foxy could definitely be a major player there, as it is the leading meme coin on Linear. And I mean, look, it's a fox. MetaMask has a fox logo. There's some very interesting stuff uh, when it comes to the speculative side of things with Foxy, considering it did get those major exchange listings day one. Have you ever seen another meme coin get an OKX listing day one? Let me know in the comments if you have. I personally haven't. And Foxy is one that I mentioned as a potential buying opportunity at this major support level in my Discord at 12. And then of course we did have that thrust up all the way actually to 18.2 before it came back down, which represents I think a 50% move here, 50.6%. Uh, so that was a very strong move for everyone that traded that. I don't recommend using crazy leverage, but for those that did play it with the invalidation, you know, you could make a three, four, five X on just the swing of that range. So that's a range that I've been playing from a trading perspective, but also just a spot perspective, having the ability to accumulate at this level and then having clear invalidation below. I love those setups when it comes to alts. And of course I shared that in the Miles High Club. As I said, there's a link in the description to join the wait list for that community. If we do end up raising the cap at some point in the future, just going quickly through a couple of other alts. Puff is another meme coin. You know, we speak about whiff. Meme coins have really been the leaders of this cycle where a lot of the hype and narrative flow is. Puff's very interesting because it's more of a gamified meme. It's one that I wanted to update you on because I did that original video saying it was the only meme coin I was buying when I was minting the potions. I think at the time, a lot of people were like, Miles, what are you talking about? What's this Puff thing? Are you shilling us a rug? Well, I mean... It's turned out to be pretty good, not just from a price action perspective, but because you've been able to stake Puff, earn more Puff, and we're only on chapter two. So if you did end up following that video and you did the minting process and you've got Puff, just pay attention, follow them on Twitter, pay attention because there's lots of chapters coming with some big stuff in the future, which is going to enable you not only to earn more, but maybe get access to some sort of reward or interesting decision, something at the end, which is super interesting. But we're just in chapter two now. There's going to be chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six. And I mean, people are already up decent multiples on their initial investment, depending. I mean, if you minted the potion, you're definitely up. If you bought on the market, most people are also up. Um, but of course, I made that video on day one. So I got you in super early on the first day of Puff with this video here. The whole thing about this channel is trying to make people early to the latest trends. Ondo, you were early as well. That's another coin I like and I still like. I got you in at like 20, 25 cents. Um leader in the RWA sector. The reason I want to talk about it today is because it's showing this really nice price action of, you know, breakout consolidation, breakout consolidation, breakout consolidation. It has these nice levels that it plays off. I also noticed that the 200 MA on the four hour, I love the 200 moving average as a general trading indicator. It's now sitting nicely above and it's also sitting above a major support at the 7.8 region. So Ondo is interesting. If we do see some market upside, I think, RWA is going to be strong and, you know, as a reflection, Ondo is going to be strong. So this is an interesting chart setup to look at. There are also many other alts. Obviously, I'll be sharing some of these and going into more ecosystems and giving you, you know, lower caps, early ecosystem alpha in the future. But today I wanted to do more of a market update, contextualize my feelings on the current market, where we sit into the cycle and give just my opinion as to, um, you know, whether there's a rush to buy or not. I mean, the short answer to that question is no, I don't believe there is. I think you've got time. I think it's about really right now understanding each coin you're investing into, building your theses, building your conviction in certain sectors and narratives, and then on extreme red days, pulling that trigger. That is probably the best advice that I can give to you today. And in the future, we'll be going through the exact old coins that you can do it with. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. All the necessary links and resources are in the description below, and I will see you in the next one tomorrow at 6 p.m. GST. Peace out.